<laughs> so uh, I'm uh, doing the third presentation of the night, securing our WordPress site. And the, um, the audience I was kind of going after was more, um, if you have a shared hosting account, not necessarily a dedicated host or a server set up and you're, you want to learn how to secure your operating system and stuff, that I can help you with, but in this context, I was just more, want to stay uh, uh, focused on just a, a shared hosting website, which most people have, and uh, give you, try to pass along some good practical knowledge. I talked with David last night, and we uh, wanted to make sure there wasn't, we weren't giving the same presentation twice. Uh, we do have just some slight overlap, but if anything, what I'm going to offer in this presentation will uh, solidify some of the things that he said, uh, reiterate it, and uh, probably go a little bit deeper uh, technically wise. Um, my name is Russ Sanderland. I'm a Red Hat Certified Engineer, Systems Administrator by trade, Systems Engineer. I work for uh, AAA National Office as a Senior Network Systems Analyst. I own Tearstone Graphics and we have the decals in the back. You want to see some of the work we do, WordPress logos, and you can follow me at Tearstone. Uh, tonight I talk about the importance of security. Uh, I want to talk about attack surface and attack vectors. Um, just kind of get that out in the open so that we can um, have an idea of whenever we go to look at how to secure a website. Oh, thank you. When we go, when we go to <laughs> when we go to secure a website, some of the things that you want to think about when doing so, um, where, is that guy still here? We talked about adding through plug through plugins for security and stuff. I got kind of a different um, thought process on that that I want to share. Uh, basic hardening, we're just going to go some basic hardening techniques you install or you've already installed your WordPress. You're not really sure what to do. I'm hopefully going to be able to provide you some direction there. Uh, and what you should do is ongoing measures. And we'll go over some plugins. He went over some plugins already, so I'm not going to try to spend too much time on that. And um, I'm going to have a slide where you can uh, find out more information. And I'm going to make sure that this slideshow is up on WPOMando.org. Can anybody, everybody hear me okay? <laughs> All right. I'm kind of introvert, so I'm not a big, and I don't do too much public speaking. Okay, right, so uh, the importance of WordPress. WordPress is no doubt the most popular CMS out there. Uh, there's Joomla, there's Drupal, which are still pretty good, but if you look at the graphs, I think there's a, a website that actually shows the trending of the popularity of WordPress, and it's, and like Drupal, like, got popular, it's gone down, WordPress just continues to escalate. Um, and the bigger the platform, the greater the reported incidents for security. That we see that with Windows. Microsoft um, was the number one desktop operating system at the time, and they were the biggest. You know, they, they had the most hits, the most hackers, the most security vulnerabilities on the operating system. Or Mac OS hasn't uh, really become to, to, it popular until the recent Steve Jobs comeback and stuff. So it wasn't. You know, people were concentrating on the big one because it's easy to do. Um, when, when a, a platform gains popularity, it um, it's, this makes it an easier target. Um, it's less work on the hackers to create the uh, scripts and the utilities in order to exploit the websites. Uh, in 2012, 117 WordPress hack sites were reported. And that's just what was reported. That's not, there could have been way more than that. Um, in 2013, a study was done in 73.2% of the top 40,000 Alexa ranked websites were, um, were shown to have vulnerability, uh, vulnerabilities to exploit. I'm going to go over that uh, road right here. All right, attack surface. Um, the definition of attack surface is a sum of the amount of points an attacker could use to get into a system. Uh, so think of like a, a target, right? Would you want to fire at a, dark, a target that was that big, or do you want to fire a target that's this big? And there's like money on the line. You want to, you want to, you want to. You want to fire at something easy to, to hit. Something smaller that, that, that oh, yeah, I guess you have the analogy. Uh, the points of entry for extracting data or inserting malware are called attack vectors. So that's another um, term that, you'll, that you might find if you kind of look more into this. Uh, the, the way to minimize the uh, ways that, that people, or ways that uh, attackers can get into your website is to minimize the amount of code running on the site. Uh, minimize the amount of themes and plugins. You should only use what you absolutely need. And I'm going to continue going to that. And you guys can interrupt me at all times. I'm, I'm cool the conversational presentation. So when you say minimize, then you, do you recommend disabling them or together deleting them? Yes. 
Dis uh, disable and delete them off the site. Get, just get rid of them completely. Um, I actually served this slide this afternoon. Uh, WordPress 3.8.2 just was released this morning. Uh, the, some of the fixes were the potential authentication cookie forgery, which um, privilege escalation, prevent contribution, uh, contribution publishing posts, uh, hardening. There's they uh, put some hardening uh, measures in there, especially about the SQL injection, which is bad. And, you know, we're, we're like most of the times you think of, of your website, you just think of the binary portion of it and not the database, because the database for the most part doesn't really get attacked too much. But if there's some instance where it could be, it's a good thing they patch that up. And some cross-site scripting issues, and um, I'm sure you can find that whenever you guys uh, get home. Look at your site tonight. All right, so I'm going to go just go over some basic hardening. All right, so well, with the user accounts, I was thinking about this on the way over how I wanted to explain this, and there's a couple different ways to go about this, but I think the best way to do it is just to delete the admin account. I'll actually, create some other accounts, give them super user privileges, and delete the default admin account. Um, so, some places you might find, they just say rename it. That works. Um, the reason I feel deleting it is the best because in the, as the SQL database, the, uh, the admin user is number one. So you already, it's always number one. So that right there, regardless of what the name is, is still uh, an easy target if they could get through to the database and manipulate your site that way. All users with the elevator privileges should have, actually all users on the site, if you can do it, just you want to make sure they have complicated passwords. Um, uh, some of the good uh, best practices is to make sure to change every 60 to 90 days. Uh, at work, I have to change mine every 90 days anyways, so actually I never know, I have a list of all the websites and everything that I have an account on, and I change it at work and I just go through every website that I have uh, every 90 days and change all the passwords uh, to the new password I have. Uh, I make it at least eight characters, combination of mixed case, uh, numbers, special characters, uh, I have an example there. Uh, and avoid dictionary passwords. The dictionary password, the reason they say avoid dictionary passwords is because all the tools that exploit passwords, they use a dictionary. That's the first, that's the first stop. And I don't know what that is. Dictionary? Dictionary password. Uh, you open the dictionary, you use that as a password. Any, any password, that, <coughs> any word in, that you can find in a dictionary, do not use that as a password. Or a combination of words. Combination of words? Yeah. Rainbow tables. It, it goes back to mixed case, special characters, something uh, it's, it's just not readable, understand, something that you can still remember. And even if it's kind of like, I, I, even if you kind of understand it, or usually you just take a sentence and then break that up into like lead speak or something like that. It's very specific. Mm -hmm. so doesn't WordPress now have a... Like cute dog 123, that will be one of the... Yeah. Yes, WordPress has their, secure, their password strength meter now. They do now, yes. What, operating 3.8? I don't remember that. It was a 3.8? Yeah, yeah I remember that. that's true. It's like stuff that used to be labeled as strong is now that was labeled as weak and it would upgrade, so it's not yeah. going to work. Yeah, so it should um, be pretty good. Can we set that to force users to go strong passwords? I don't I don't know if you can force them. Um, but not it is security that you can override that plugin. It's if you what use is a it? better security plugin, yeah. it lets you oh. force it on subscribers. Nice. Oh, subscribers? Level level if you the, the one downside is if you get too comp if you, you create too strict password policies, people will not want to use your site because it's just too, like I think it was a web or my, my school website. I go Simple State, and they make me change it every sixty days, and I can't even remotely use the same one I had before. And I have to put like special. It's too complicated. And I have to reset it every time. It just doesn't go. It doesn't agree with my existing password methodology. <laughs> Okay, the database, uh, um, MySQL is what runs WordPress. It's the back end of WordPress. Uh, some things you might probably start know about is that uh, use abstract naming convention. That includes the, the database name, the prefix. Usually it's WP underscore your table name. All your table names will have the same prefix. Change that to something um, that's not so obvious. And, your, you know, my, the, and the username is actually uh, used to access the database. Uh, limit the privileges that that user has that, that whatever it, when you first set up WordPress you put your the site name you're going to put the database user and and the, the password for that that user whatever you set whatever WordPress uses to talk to the database should only have select insert delete and update privileges you do not need grant drop or alter you definitely don't want drop anyways and so having select insert delete and update won't shouldn't pose a problem for most plugins? No. Um, no. If your database 
database is already set up and it has the, because you didn't know any better, I'm not knowing any better, but it already has the WP underscore, can you change that easily? Uh, it's somewhat easy to do that. Um, if you especially use PHP my mm -hmm. Miami, you can change it there. There's actually plugins that'll do it. Oh, okay. So it makes it easier. Oh, okay. I, I'm actually going to scrape over that here in a little bit. Uh, web hosts, part of your hardening is your web host. Find a web host that understands WordPress. And I think David was talking about, yeah, there, there is. Uh, he was talking about um, managed hosts. I found three. Uh, they just also, also happen to be our sponsors. There are a lot more of them. I'm sure you guys uh, can attest to. Uh, Go to P Engine, awesome. These guys, they specialize on WordPress. Can't get better than that. Bluehost. Uh, I use Dreamhost. They have a, a new solution called Dreampress, which I'm on. Um, they, so they have dedicated staff to actually help you out. So why this is important is if you if you have an attack, you want to be able to contact them and have them help you through whatever's going on. So they can get on the server and stop it. They understand the, the software that you're running and, and its demands and whatnot. Uh, they, so you want to take security seriously. Uh, find out if they perform backups. If not, uh, implement a backup solution. And there's a lot of different ways you can you can back your site up. Um, I actually just use a, a cron job to back myself. I, I tar up the entire binary, push it up here, and I um, do a dump of the database and put it up one directory higher in my uh, hierarchy. But do you use WP cron or do you just use a Linux cron? Linux cron job. I, this is at least on three most of I have that built yet. Yeah, it's SH in my box. I can run cron jobs. Uh, server side scans, malware cleanup. Um, the Dreamhost method for a fact does server side scans because uh, one time I had my sites hacked or, well, let me tell you, I had Joomla running and Joomla is a very old version and it was just prone to just being a field day for hackers and then I put a WordPress installation up there and then, well, they got kicked in a lot of emails saying that things were, were pretty bad. So they, they attempted to clean it all up and they kept finding more stuff and keep sending me more emails. And the easiest way to recover from that is just to delete everything and reinstall it. And you know, they, you know for a fact you get that stuff. <laughs> you get everything off your site. Um, the host That's when backups are important too. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, the host, yes. Do you recommend, as far as backup, would it be safer to backup on an online service or do you like Amazon? To, to, yeah. Anything, you, whatever, I mean, there's no right you answer to this. Right, there's no right answer other than uh, don't back it up on the like a, 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 a don't back it up on the site on a directory that can be read by, by the web server. I mean, like you can, uh, like I, I, if you put it on the server, you can put it somewhere where the web server can't get to you. I'm just saying that's that's like the only exclusion to the rule. Like thing. you could you can use Amazon E3 if you have a process on your own PC to go out and grab the file and bring it down. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, uh, DB Backup is a plugin that actually takes the database, um, exports it to an email. Uh, for me, once a week. There's some that, that interface with Dropbox and others. Yes, no. There's so many. Um, There's one called Backdraft that a, one of my customers uses. It does a really good job that backs it up with, to Dropbox. There's a lot of uh, cloud based storage. It's super cheap, free. Um, Amazon, uh, not EC. What's their? Oh, S3. S3 storage solution is really dirt cheap. And, um, Oftentimes, most people have it themselves. Backup solutions for a very cost, uh, optimal cost. It's best. I mean, if you rely on them, then go with them because they have the server. They have to the backup. Everything goes on. To um, your host should have VPS options for growth and better security. Uh, the reason I added that was when you're on a shared host. What David said earlier is that you're you're on there with a bunch of other people on the same server. Actually, you said that. Um, and if these people get hacked, they're not taking care of their WordPress site. It could potentially spill over, even if they um, get exploited to where they're, they actually become cross-site scripting engine themselves and start DDoSing other sites, and it brings down the performance of the whole server. A VPS solution is like a virtual machine, a virtual server that you all your content's on, and you're the only one that has it, and you can have free range of your operating system if your host allows you to do that. Okay, the site itself, harming the site itself, uh, avoid multiple WordPress installations on one domain. That's the reason, the, the reason for that is that your tax service. If you have, like, say you're running, whatever, it's <coughs> Bob, JoeBob.com, and you put two WordPress <coughs> installations on there, inevitably, depending on how you're managing them, one may be 
preferred over the other. And you'll keep on updating, you start kind of letting this one go by the wayside. And while WordPress does offer free, you know, the core plugin pushes, which is a fantastic option, a thing they put on there now, um, the plugins and these are not getting updated. So you don't want to get to that, site, that type of situation. You want your, your site to be by itself. Um, and the mistake that I made, do not run your development version of your site on your production site, and that's an irresistible temptation. You have your, your site, and you're like, well, I don't want to make changes on the live production site, so I'm going to copy my binaries to a subdirectory, set up a new database, and run it. That's not a good idea. Don't do that. Um, yeah, Scott. It's just something I've found personally that works really well for me is it, it kind of it also solves the backup problem, is I do all of my development locally. Absolutely. So that way, I have I always have a backup on my laptop, which I can then back up to a, an external hard drive, and then once everything's done, then I push it live. So there's always somewhere to go. Like you don't have to worry about oh, I need Dropbox or anything like that. You've got something right there, and plus it helps you. What are you using? Mamp. Mamp. You a guy developed on Mac, so yeah. Mamp. Uh, Mac is Mamp and Windows. Mamp. So just do a Google search for X A X A M N P and then M A M N P. I was actually helping someone set that up. That him. It was it's working. Really easy. Yeah, it's um, it basically just allows you to run a web server, um, MySQL, and even does it has a P, uh, my PHP admin on there. You can go in. And if you want even more options uh, for backups, install that local server onto your Dropbox account or whatever you want to. That way, all those files are always safe wherever you want them. <laughs> That's, a, I mean, that's what I do for my local. I have my local installed on my Dropbox folder. And then you got to worry about if Dropbox, get, Dropbox gets hacked. Then what? Oh, then we're all going down. It, 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 or <laughs> like, or like, <laughs> like, like Netflix went down that one time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, disable FTP on your site and use SFTP. Um, at least Dream Host allows you the ability to not have it at all, or at least to turn FTP on or SFTP. I recommend if you can do that, use SFTP only. Wait, I don't understand. Um, can you elaborate more on that? Um, FTP. FTP. Oh, yeah, you talked about using FileZilla. FileZilla is a FTP client. And that's how you normally use the, the FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you, that's a method to use to transfer files from, no, a traditional method, a long age old method that's very insecure. And then you transfer files to one place to another, especially on Linux, Linux environments. So is Windows. there, I guess, so if, if you're hosting on like GoDaddy, that's that, what you're talking about is like when you host on a website, how to get the files to that website? Yeah, you would use, you normally use FTP. Most people use FTP. Back in the day, whenever I was uh, working for a web host, people used front page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then one guy told me one guy just told me to use FileZilla. Well, FileZilla, it's just there's a million FTP clients out there, so you can't go wrong. There's oh, plenty of them out good. there. To clarify, um, while he's calling it an FTP client, you can also use FileZilla to do SFTP. Oh, yes. yes. It means secure file transfer protocol. Um, the secure setting books. up SFTP actually takes place on your web host. Right. Yeah. When you're setting up an FTP account, you have to instead set up an SFTP account. So as far as you know, FTP, like if you use what like if you use FileZilla, you you can call it F FTP, but it's really if, if you've got a good good web host, it's already going. It's, SFTP is pretty much going to be by default because you want to be secure, and they want you to be secure because especially if you use somebody like GoDaddy, GoDaddy their whole thing is that they can have really cheap hosting because they use shared hosting, and they want as many people as possible, and they store them all on. Like you can have 50 different websites on one server, and that's great. But if one of them goes down, they will shut the entire server block down. Mm. I know because it's happening. I'm not a big fan of it. I wasn't until I, I used them recently, and actually when I had an issue, they even it was three o'clock in the morning, and they were right there yeah, with me the entire time. Their support. So is the really whole good. purpose. Of it's gotten a lot better since it, you must have been terrible. Yeah. yeah. Um, but now they've. They decided basically to get into the WordPress managed hosting game, yeah. and they realized they really had to step it up. So, yeah. so what we're talking about here is somebody might be able to hack into your files if you're not using SFTP. They could read your stream. Well, yeah. I mean, anything that's secure insecure the internet, anytime on the internet, you're probably being watched. Everything you do, anyways. But if you have a secure connection, if me and you were talking and we we're talking our own language, 
and nobody else can understand it. That's that's basically what it's doing. It's talking in encrypted language, and nobody else can understand. So our conversation stays private. But if I'm talking out in the open, I'm still talking to you. Everybody else can hear it too. Even in you know, when you uh, specify your host and port information, you can select SFTP or SSH from the drop down, and you will notice that for, for, for FTP port is 21, for SFTP usually 22. Some hosting company change that, and then you can specify. If you are working with GoDaddy, you need to request them separately to enable SSH. Yeah. Yeah. Our dream host is just uh, per, uh, it's set up per user account, you configure it per user account, and you just switch it to SFTP. And you're right, that's port 22, it goes over SSH. And SSH is coincidentally the same, same way that you would um, tell them that, for lack of better words, because tell them that's completely uh, insecure. But you get to the system, you can run it like a like your own stream. Yes, sir. Um, I, I, I don't want to steal your No, I'm good. More important, if these things sound like they're important to you, but you have no idea what you just said, send an email to your web host, they will take care of it. Absolutely, you. yes. I, I, if nothing else, I'm just hoping to plant mustard seeds in your head, so you're like, I heard some guy talk about that at the WordPress meetup. That sounds important. I'm going to go find out more about it. So if nothing else, so you can take the way that some of the ideas I'm at least trying to kind of pass along here. These are just standard things that, that, that most people, you know, in this industry, they've been doing for years. So but it's, not, it's not like, you know, at work, um, because I do, I'm the system minister at work, so I do all the FTP servers. So. All the tickets for FTP always come to me, regardless of what it is. Somebody just can't FTP to another site that I have nothing to do with. The tickets don't come to me, so it's just like it's FTP can be scary, SFTP can be scary. So um, a lot of those um, things can be scary because they're they're hard to visualize and imagine. Speaking of being scary, so permissions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is the real fun part. Yeah, so I don't want to I don't want to uh, get you guys too into this, but. On your FTP client, if you're using FTP client, or you've ever seen this before, you probably see a, a permissions represented in three numbers. Those three numbers represent the first one is you, the user, it's whoever the file is owned by, and there's a group, ownership, and then that's what the public can see. And those numbers that goes from zero to seven is a combination of values. The read privilege is worth four points. The write privilege is worth two points. And execute ability is worth um, one point. One enter. Um, so you combine that, and that's how you get that number. So that's why when you see that, that's what that means. So like for example, I put here it's like you know RWX that, that like right here the sets up by you would have full privileges. The group that you're part of that may have other users that have the same group have full privileges, but the rest of the world can you only know, read or execute. They can't make modifications to that file. All right, so in terms of, I actually pulled this because I get a little confused about how WordPress does their thing sometimes. The default is 664 for files, uh, which means that you, know, you, get, you can rewrite, rewrite, which you can modify the files, which you can't execute because most of it's PHP and everything. And um, the world can only read it. And folders is 775, full permissions, full permissions, um, the read and execute, which uh, read and execute is required by the web server. Uh, and WP config, the, the PHP, or WP config PHP, uh, HD access. These are two very important files on the website. This contains very sensitive information about how you interact with your web server and, other, and, and uh, how your website is basically configured. And the .HD access, which is an extremely important file, and and if I if you really want to get really down hardcore with it, this um, the understanding HD access can take care of most plugin functionality you find in security, right? Would you would you agree? Absolutely. If you can, if you know how to do your HD access good, you really wouldn't need too much of a, a, a WordPress security plugin because that HD access is just an extension of the server's configuration. Because the server has its configuration or the, its web server, and then this is a customized version of the of the, of the extension of the web server or Apache web server. So itself. you assign rules there. Yeah, and, and if it's not HD access, you can say that the WP admin directory, that's not really the WP admin directory, WP admin directory is over here, but I'm going to tell you it's over here. So you can increase RAM right there, everything, and it does it for your own tires. Um, yeah, no, that's more of a server it. configuration. This is, oh, I'm sorry. That's more of like a system configuration. The web service itself has a lot of configurations and restrictions and changes that you can add, like rewrite rules and uh, filters that you use doing that. And you can actually block IPs through .ht access and whatnot, create blacklist. Which, most of these plugins, all they're doing is rewriting .ht access anyways. So if you could, if you can master .ht access, you're really good pretty much with any platform. 
as far as security is concerned? I think the, what he said is, is also possible through HTXS, uh, depending on host. Some host block that. Uh, HTXS is basically your localized version of HTTP.com file. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, especially in a shared hosting scenario, both ID and other companies, they don't allow you control over HTTP.com file. No, 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 no host. I've never seen yeah, a host that yeah. does that. That's so why they give you HTXS yeah, yeah. where you have limited privilege to define your redirect rule, some of the blocking of IPs and Mm -hmm. yes. Exactly. So like as, as uh, Adam said before, that HD access is the first thing that is read from your site. Which means that uh, whatever you do behind that could possibly be blocked or overwritten, but that HD access is always the first thing. I have run across on several of my recent WordPress, WordPress sites that I can't um, it's requiring uploads folder to be seven 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 to be able to is that mm -hmm. is that okay? Yes. Okay. Is that, it has to be able to write. All right, I just yeah, it's, I had one one or two sites that for some reason didn't require that, and then I, others that started to, and I thought, okay, I don't know what's going on here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so that's I think normal. typically that happens when you try to install a new plugin or new thing. Yeah. Once you install, the installation is successful, then change it to seven seven five. Okay. You can convert that. Yeah. You go back and forth. Okay. Great. But I would say that most people don't do that because it's a pain in the butt to like, get in there and do that all the time. Uh, I go on security. I use the, the same quote that David had in his slideshow. <laughs> yeah. Outside submission is worth the path of here. So this is so basically uh, this part of the presentation. I've gone just if you already have a WordPress site installed, use these ideas. Um, if you have not done any of that stuff, please consider it or at least do a lot more research on it. All right. So ongoing thing. Um, update your site. All right. Um, update WordPress core. Your plugin themes. Always make sure they're updated. Um, the, w, the, the WP White Security website they found uh, with the, the stat that I mentioned earlier that 73.2% were running old versions that had documented vulnerabilities. So 72.3% of all work, the top WordPress sites they found were simply because they weren't updated. And it's easy to do, especially your plugins. I, I, and um, I'll actually mention it later, but WP Manage will, uh, actually gives you weekly emails to, to let you know if your plugins need to be updated, if you don't go into your admin panel a lot. That's, especially if you manage a lot of sites or you have a lot of customer sites, that's an excellent solution for that. Um, when they did, they did that study, 74 versions, they found 74 different versions of WordPress, 10 of which were fake. They had like 6.6 .6 version out there. But so 64, they had 64 versions of WordPress out there. And this is actually probably uh, 2013, they just did the 3.9 with the automatic updates within the last year, so I'm sure that number will come down a lot nowadays anyways. Yes. Um, older versions of WordPress are not maintained, but with security updates. So, like, when you buy Microsoft Windows or buy um, software, usually the, the, the vendor, what? Oh, so okay, like Mac X. OS X or something. No, 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 I was gonna say like Windows XP or Microsoft Office 2003. Perhaps. If anyone heard the news today. Yes. Yeah, so, um, well, when should we buy software? You can hold on to that software and it continues to be, it continues to be maintained by the vendor. Uh, WordPress, they don't take like a, you can't just lock into Office Day 3.6 and expect security updates. That's it. You have to keep going linear with their version updates if you want security updates. So you, that's a really good point because today's security update, they updated it if you're running 3.8, um, which you should already be on 3.1, it goes up to 3.8.2. If you were only running 3.7, they did update 3.7 to 3.7.2. That's right. And that's as far as they go. They yeah. basically they go back one version because to give people a chance, just because of, um, especially right now, because things are going, the process is happening a lot faster than it has been. Mm -hmm. Like 3.9 comes out next week. Mm -hmm. because yeah. The end or yet. It, it, that is the hard date. Uh, they mentioned to get to that. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's definitely like. If you don't upgrade WordPress, you are leaving yourself open to, it's like waving a giant red flag saying, hey, come and get me. Absolutely. Yeah, because they, they, every version of WordPress that, that's old it can have anywhere from 10 to 20 vulnerabilities per version. And this is why this is this is, this study was so profound and important. Even they, they, I'll, fi, I'll actually provide a link at the end of the slide. You can actually go out and see the study to see the breakdown of how many vulnerabilities are available per version. That's not clearly the stack behind it. You know? The other thing I just want to yeah, mention, right. because you mentioned updating all your plugins. Updating plugins and themes is, all, is very, very important, but make sure before you, well, for always back up, you should be backing up every day. But, um, make sure you back up before you update your plugins, because there, there are some plugins, 
look and see what they're updating. Because if they're just doing things like, uh, like you've got a gallery plugin and all they're doing is changing some CSS code, you don't need to worry about that because the CSS code is not a security vulnerability. Um, but it may break your site because you could update, um, one that's really bad at it is uh, Next Gen Gallery, which is a really good plugin, but they make changes to their CSS all the time that completely break the layout of what you, you're dependent on. And then all of a sudden you, you click the update button and you think, oh, everything's gone. fine. And now your site looks completely different and you have no way to get it back unless you've, you've uh, backed up. You can go back and, so just pay attention to what's being up. Don't just blindly go, oh, it says update. Click the update button because you can run into, you, I, we've had clients come to us and go, my site's broken. I, all I did was update. I don't know what happened. The first thing, did you back it up? Okay, you did. Okay, good. we can fix it. Because if they didn't back it up, there's nothing we can do about it. Unless you happen to know, have a screenshot of what everything looks like. And to add on that, always test locally any updates before you push them on. That way you can catch it and save yourself a lot of time and hard data. Alright. Um, perform routine inspections of your site. Um, perform, si perform site cleanups on a regular basis. Check all of your plugins that you have installed. If you have ones that you're not using, if they're, they're sitting there disabled, just delete them because you can always reinstall them. Um, and if there's any plugins that you don't recognize that that you don't remember installing, even after a really drunk night, you still remember installing that, <laughs> most likely it's something you want to handle with caution because that could be um, an attacker putting something on a site which allows them an easy backdoor to get to your site. Um, and yeah, so we got remove themes and plugins that you no longer need because it reduces your attack surface. It reduces the amount of um, the potential ability that someone has to, to exploit your site. Uh, scan with site check. This is a general free malware checker of your site. Um, it's a, it's a security.net. They have a, um, they, you can pay extra, of course, they, when they, they beat you out there and they're like, oh, you got to get all this malware, you can pay us to get rid of it. Um, and they also have a monitoring service too. So this is kind of gives you a good idea to get, uh, keep a pulse on your site. Uh, WP scan. This is kind of a little bit more advanced, but uh, I just wanted to put it out there. This is a black box tool that our information security guys use at where I work uh, for different things. But um, it also it is specifically for scanning WordPress sites. So when I first when I went to them, I said, I'm going to give a, a speech on WordPress. What, what is it that you guys use for WP scan? Okay, cool. I'll make sure I'll bring that up. So. Uh, all the information is at wpscan.org, especially if you like taking around Linux boxes and you want to take advantage of that. I've been looking for that. Can I all right. ask a question Go about ahead, uh, security? Sure. Security? Uh, no, security. Okay, security, yeah. Um, they have an FTP server side scan. Do you recommend that? Because I pay for their service. You do? Yeah. What are they? Oh, so they go in and do what? They just look at all your files and your site, the back end files? Right. So I haven't done that just because. I mean, they're, they're just a solution. So well, I, mean, I had one issue and they cleaned it up quick. Because mm -hmm. they won't be able to just go from the external site website cleaning thing up. They have to get into the back end and go in. But then they the have same to. thing your web host would do, like how I was uh, explaining earlier, how the web host will routinely scan your site looking for malware and remove it. Yeah. They'll delete it from your site and rename it to a different file so you can look at it later. Yeah, but this, this portion is at, at, uh, asking for FTP access. Mm -hmm. They constantly scan it every hour. And then mm -hmm. if there's an issue, they can go in there and, and take it out. Right. Before I even have a chance to tell them, that, that'd be a good a good idea to be proactive. Yeah. I mean, you if your web host doesn't do it already, they do also. But. Yeah, I have done it. That's not like something that's like going to hurt the performance of your site. Yes, yeah. I can't think of anything bad about that. Especially, you know, unless it's Joe Bob's security warehouse that's doing it. You don't really <laughs> know what he's up to. What's wrong with Joe Bob? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, understanding your plugins. Um, I don't really don't, uh, kind of go on what he was saying before. I don't necessarily believe in recklessly installing plugins because you're like, oh, I want that feature, I want that feature, I want that feature. Before you install a plugin on your site, you really should do a deep dive and determine if this is something that's going to meet your requirements. Don't <coughs> install a plugin and start building this elaborate infrastructure of plugins and it weighs down server performance. Then that drives your business uh, requirements. You know, like, uh, oh, now you get a fast roaster because I install all these plugins and stay secure. No, it should be the other way around. Determine what it is that you want, that what is important to you is, in terms of security. Document all that down, then go start shopping for plugins. 
And ideally, if you can, don't use a plugin at all. If you can do this, by, if you can do this from the system side or write a, enough plugin to get done what needs to get done, that's what I can. I, um, at WordCamp, I was introduced to the concept of site-specific site plugins for different persons, which didn't make it tonight. And I have like just totally embraced that. I believe that, that some plugins you just download for the most minimal amount of change to your site, but you can take that and, and just add to your own site security plugin or uh, site-specific plugin. And in addition to CSS customizations or any, anything else that's specific to your site that you want to change, that means it'll survive theme updates, plugin updates, and it'll keep your site running lean and you have a lot more control over it. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Um, and I mean, and I'm not like a super developer or anything, but I can get by. I've learned enough about understanding how filters work and, and, uh, uh, and actions to create functions to do exactly what I need to to just manipulate CSS and stuff like that. So it's not, it's not too bad. And if that talk comes up at WordPress or WordCamp again, and that's something you're interested in, I highly recommend going to that. He did a really good job on that last year. Uh, so plugins have performance implications on WordPress sites. The more plugins you have, the more your sites can slow down. And I'll tell you, um, Jetpack is, I think, it has so much functionality, but it's weird. It's third, it, like if you run P3, a, a product or a plugin called P3 Plugin Profile, it'll give you a graph of how long it takes each plugin to load up. Jetpack itself takes about a third, loading, a third of your page loading time. Um, because I assume Jetpack does a lot of back end with automatic to go get stuff. There that's must be that's basically stuff. what it does. Yeah, because that's why it takes so long. Um, the pro because the problem with Jetpack is basically, if you've ever used WordPress.com, um, like you just set up a blog or something like that, it has, you'll see like it has all these statistics and it's, it's a whole bunch of really great stuff. And then you install like WordPress, uh, WordPress.org installation, which is what we usually talk about here. And you go, where's all the cool stuff? Mm -hmm. it's, weird. it's all in Jetpack. So that's why Jetpack is so heavy, is because it's got all this really cool stuff most of it you really don't need. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really, it's there for, you know, for pe people who use a WordPress.com installation that their bloggers made, that's how, like, if you're a developer, you should probably get familiar with Google Analytics because it does what Jetpack does, but it's better. And it's run by Google, which means basically all the stuff you're going to be doing for SEO, it's all going to integrate right there. And they're going to tell you, hey, use analytics, use webmaster. Tools. It's all going to do the same thing. Yeah, and uh, what DreamHost, I, I, I don't know enough on the web host to know this or not, but you can actually, in the control panel of DreamHost, put your analytics ID in there, so that means that's one less plugin you have to have on your site. The less plugins, the better. I mean, you want a nice, streamlined sports car that's lightweight and can go down the track fast. You know, load it up with a bunch of stuff, like a bunch of wings and body kits and stuff just to make it look cool. It needs to be, it needs to perform well. Uh, and so that goes to security plugins. You just can't dump a bunch of security plugins on your site, and then it starts running slow, and you're like, well, oh, it's secure. But if it's if it's slow, people are not going to want to use it. You know, people's attention spans are like the, the attention span of a gnat. If it takes longer than two seconds to load your site, they're gone. So I mean, it's a it's a tough balance you have to weigh out. But that's why it's more most important. I think is to determine what your requirements are. It's it's security. There's certain aspects of security that are really important to you. Figure out what those are and go after. If you have to use a plugin, use one that that best tailors to your needs, or find um, parts of plugins that work better. Um, uh, so the reason that again, more plugins you have, the bigger your attack surface. Uh, so the guy that had three plugins, he might be using like a fraction from each plugin to um, do, to perform certain aspects of screen at site. But the other 75% of all those plugins that he has is extra code that's not doing anything that could be easily exploited, even if he just um, may get lazy on updating the plugins. That's more vulnerability that he has out there. Um, this, uh, misconfiguration of plugins will break your site. I think David brought that up in our earlier talk. If you just um, just click a button, they sometimes you kind of get they, they lure you into this. Just click this, and everything will be all right. And you can go sleep, go to sleep at night, knowing that your your site safe and secure. Know exactly what that button does. It, it'll say, "Oh, automatically secure your site," or "Secure your site against basic attacks." Understand? Go find out. Do your research on what the, what it is that's doing. Or, and, and when they have a bunch of open tabs across top, just don't click them all and say, I need the most secure site in the hall because you're probably going to get locked out of your site and it's not going to be usable. Um, that's Better WP Security has that big problem. They've got that little click checkbox at the bottom, at the top that's like, oh yeah, here, just take it. We'll take care of everything for you. And when you click that, all of a sudden now you don't have access to your WP config file, which is a really big problem. Mm -hmm. And you don't have access to your HT access file. 
and getting getting that access back is a pain in the butt. Basically, you have to uninstall WP Security in order to get that access back. And usually, you just go to your um, if that ever happens, you break your website. You just uh, either through FTP or SSH. What I prefer to doing is to go into the plugins directory and just rename your the whatever plugin that's causing problems, so like .bak or something like that, and that that automatically disables the plugin. Um, plugin support can be a challenge. Uh, the reason I wrote plugin support can be a challenge is because um, with the, you'll end up creating your site or securing your site in such a way that's a little different than what other people experience. So, and especially if you're doing it free, uh, you're trying to take the free route, you want to go to online portals and, and try to get help, you're like, oh, my website's broken, I don't know why. You're not going to get a response for five, six days, or if you do, it's probably some jerk that, that says, oh, you know, you, you should pay for search or something to begin with. So, just be, it's going to be very cautious. Just don't recklessly install plugins without knowing what you're doing. That's, that's my, my big takeaway to you guys. Keep it, keep it slim, keep it um, performance oriented, but make sure it meets your requirements. You make a really good Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, you, you. Yeah, I just have a question. Uh, so, you said it'd be, it'd be better practice to build and change and update your website all locally and then upload it to the server instead of just doing it on the server? That's the ideal way to do it. If you, um, you can use XAMPP or, or MAMP, right? And then there's another plugin that we got for free at WordCamp. What was it called? WP Migrant Pro or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a plugin that will automatically take your website for your machine and publish it out to WordPress. And uh, we actually got a free copy of that. Uh, uh, so WordCamp, if you guys don't go, you might be missing out. It's pretty cool stuff. So nothing else. Uh, you bring up a really good point about um, the plugin support because a lot of times, like, there are so many plugins, it's what, the, kind of the general rule of plugins is you get what you pay for. So there are God knows how many free plugins out there that all do the same thing. And the most important thing you have to look at when you look at the repository is see what the most recent version they support is. Because you'll see a lot of plugins that have thousands of five-star ratings, but their most recent version is support 3.5. That's, that's just asking for it. It's because really, the developer who was doing it for free just either got too busy or got bored or and decided to go work on something else. Mm -hmm. And it, it's great that it has all these great reviews, but it hasn't been updated in two years. And that's a, that's a massive problem. Like, uh, I know um, if, if you got a chance to talk, at WordCamp last year, Pip, uh, Pippin Williamson gave a great talk about plugins in general. He's a very big plugin developer. Support for plugin developers is a giant pain in the butt because people tend to freak out when stuff breaks. And so developers that don't, that a lot of us are very introverted. They don't like talking to people. They don't like, Basically, it's the joke from Office Space. The, the, the programmers don't like to deal with the customers, and when they're developing the plugin, they really don't want to deal with you when you're stuck, especially when you're angry. So they're gonna, you're gonna get that. Oh, I'll get to it. Uh, so if you're, if you buy a plugin and you actually pay for it, those are the ones that are usually they have a support structure set up. They usually have a staff specifically to handle those things, like like Pippin's plugins. Yeah. More important. Some of us have day jobs, so when we put plugins in the repository, it may take us a week or two to check our support forums because we don't have time to get to those. tickets. But, uh, <laughs> Just because your site's broken doesn't mean my site's broken. <laughs> yeah, that's my a good site's more important to me. Yeah, that's, uh, they bring up really good points. Any of the software that you decide to incorporate in your site, you want to make sure it's well supported. Uh, one of the themes that I used on one of my sites the guy just kind of gave up supporting it. He supports it. He has a ticket queue and everything, but it's like, you you coded this for BB Press, please code it for Buddy Press too. He's like, eh. like I'll just kind of just keep collecting my paycheck. And sometimes they get kind of after you know, because I guess a lot of developers kind of feel that they're they rather like creating things and making beautiful things, and things that are useful and and um, things that, that make people's life easier or provide solutions, but they don't necessarily want to keep maintaining them. Even systems guys like me, I just want to put it out there and move on to the next time. Yeah, exactly. Just keep going on the bigger and better things. <laughs> it's not my fault you broke it. That's 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 my favorite thing. Uh, okay. All right. So we go on the next slide. Uh, limit login attempts. This is a basic um, um, oh good basic plugin. 
that um, prevents brute, brute force attacks. It, um, this is usually standard with most security, um, most security plugins, uh, but it's a it's a lighter weight version of, of the, doing that instead of having this big clicking on it uh, thing. But th th this will um, will stop certain attempts by uh, coming from an IP address or a username. Um, yeah, so that's what that is. Uh, I spoke earlier about Manage WP. This is a, um, a plugin that like provides your central dashboard to all the sites that you manage. You can go in there and you can see what the, what the plugins are currently at, what versions, what where they need fixing and stuff. And um, you get sometimes you get I get emails every week on all the sites that I've done for people. I don't necessarily do them for for money, but the sites that I have done, I want to maintain them and uh, keep up with them. They're like church websites and stuff like that. They depend on me. Um, a, uh, let's see, uh, essential update, uh, oh, they, they can do automated backups and it provides email notification works. Uh, iThemes Security, which is previously known as Better WP Security, they, automatic, they had that automatic 